In this tutorial, we'll be talking about the button versus cutoff single raised pots, and we'll hone in and look a little bit about the dry rag boards. Here I've got a simulation database of 27 dry rag flops. Dry rag meaning that there aren't many straight draws. The strongest hand on the flop is the top set, and there's not a lot of great potential on these kinds of boards. It doesn't necessarily mean that there, there is no flush draw. Here we've got a combination of flush draws and two tone and, and rainbow boards, but there's no monotone boards in this database. So it ranges all the way from ace king, nine kind of board, all the way down to like a jack six two, jack seven two. Very dry types of boards. Once again, it's the button versus the cutoff versus button single raised pot, so the cutoff is opened and now the button is called and we're seeing a flop with a stack to pot ratio. We have a look quickly at the tree used to run this simulation. Here on this Ace King 9 two tone 68 gigabyte tree starting pot of six big blinds which makes sense after a open size of 2.25 and for the other for the rainbow boards it's an even bigger simulation. I think the biggest one of things this simulation set was run on a 128 gigabyte machine. And this is the setup for that. So lots of bet sizes throughout. So it's a fairly accurate simulation of these kinds of boards. Okay, let's have a look at some of the lines on the flop and specifically the bet sizing and how that bet sizing relates to the type of flop. So the first player here is the cutoff. We've got the cutoff's opening range and then there's the button calling range. The, we can see that there's mostly checking in terms of the average of these 27 flops if they're all weighted the same, which in, in, in this set they're all weighted to that frequency. We've got a checking frequency of 77.12 for the cutoff player. So the cutoff player is mostly checking to the button. Once again, the equity again is 47.46. So the cutoff on average has a weaker hand than the button does. And the EV, remember the pot is six, the EV for the cutoff is only 2.47. So it's less than half the pot and kind of reflects their positional disadvantage, equity disadvantage, and on some kinds of boards, polarity disadvantage as well. There are certain boards with a polarity advantage, talking about these ace king boards. And on these ace king boards, you've got ace king seven, right? When I filter for, when I order the boards for the size of these big plot bets, it's twice pot, one and a half times a pot, and the pot size bet. There's ace king seven, and then for the pot size bet, ace king nine, ace king seven. So on, on these ace king boards, because the cutoff has ace king, well, but the button doesn't, um, the cutoff can have a big betting range, either betting the pot or betting or an overbet, whether it's rainbow or or two tone. But most of the time, most of the time, the cutoff when they do choose to bet, they're going to be betting this half pot size or this quarter pot size. Depends on the board. With these half pot sizes, all these king high boards, plenty of half pot betting and quarter pot betting. And if we filter for the checking frequency, go around to the bottom, the boards that are bet most frequently in terms of these dry rags are these king high ones. And that kind of makes sense because the cutoff has ace king, but the button doesn't. So that ace king is going to be used to build a value range on the flop and to deny some equity. Ace king on these kinds of boards, on these king high boards, is not as strong as on the ace king high boards because there's just more sets available for for the button player. So say for example on king nine three, king eight two, king six two, there's those two bottom sets. Versus on ace king nine, there's only really the set of nines and the set of sevens. On ace king nine, ace king seven. So that's why there's more betting there. On the other hand, the kinds of boards that are checked are a lot more of these ace high boards, as we discussed in the previous video. The button has a lot of stronger ace highs, stuff like ace jack high, pre flop, ace queen high pre flop, at a decent frequency in terms of the opposite hands, which pre flop. So on, on an ace jack board, queen high, jack high, 
a side with two low cards, queen height type stuff, the button is going to be pretty happy with themselves. Having flopped top pair with good kickers on queen eight two, for example, there's ace queen offsuit, letting preflop in the button, king queen offsuit, and king queen suited as well. So plenty of strong queen x, and also the two sets, the set of eights and the set of twos. So for that reason, on these types of flops, the flop itself has hit the button's range more heavily, and so the cutoff is going to be checking to the button. Right. Let's have a look at kind of the responses to a check. All right. So say, for example, the cutoff checks, what are the sizes that the button is going to take and how often are they going to bet? Notice that the button bets more frequently than the cutoff, right? which is what we would expect. Usually the, the imposition player in the usually in the, the imposition player in, in, in these kinds of spots will bet more frequently when checked to than the opposition the opposition player will, will bet. Noting that the equity when checked to has gone up to fifty four point one four on average. And the checking frequency is down all the way down at forty six point six six. So betting a little bit more than half the time. So with respect to the fifty percent rule, the imposition player can't be betting too often. And the opposition player should have constructed their checking range to prevent the imposition player from just stabbing with basically any kind of hand. All right, and in terms of the bet sizes, there are there's a, there's slightly more flops where there's big betting, so betting one and a half times a pot, and even here betting twice the pot a little bit of the time. But this betting one and a half times a pot, betting making these pot size bets usually are going to be on these boards, which either really favour the the bun or counterintuitively really favor the cutoff. So here, for example, this one and a half pot bet on this ace jack six, ace jack six reasonably favors the button here because the button's got ace jack preflop, the set of jacks, the set of sixes. So it's fairly happy with themselves. And there's also ace queen and a tiny fraction of ace king offsuit, that flat preflop that can go for this big bet. So this is a big bet, one and a half and pot can really just hammer those Ace X hands that, that have opened in the cutoff, and even those Jack X hands that have opened in the cutoff. King 9 3, slightly different type of board. King 9 3 is reasonably well favoured for the cutoff, but their checking range is fairly weak. And the button still has the set of nines and set of threes, which can be used for big betting. And also there's King Queen as well, King Queen, King Jack, which are this is the strong King X, which the which the button flats pre flop. On the other hand, the cutoff's got plenty of weak King X which have opened the pot. Which are now going to be still going to have to call against these flop bets, but won't like additional aggression on the turn. Cut off once again. We'll also have some 9x, which have hit very middling type hands, those 9x. So the button betting big into them on those types of boards will put a lot of pressure on those middling hands. So starting from the flop. Here, pot size bet, ace king seven. It's the same kind of idea. There's ace queen, set of sevens, ace queen six. Once again, ace queen, set of sixes, ace jack six, like we talked about. Really putting pressure on those that ace x and that second pair, which have hit, right? The um, imposition player, the button here, has all that strong second pair and, and strong top pair, but the cutoff, the out of position player, has on average weaker pairs of that of those ranks in terms of the, the kickers just not, not being able to show down very well. Now, let's have a look at the other kinds of bet sizes. So there's pot, the pot bet size, the half pot bet size and quarter pot bet size. Half pot bet size, not being used super frequently, really just mixing them with some of the other boards. The main thing to focus on is this quarter pot bet size, so this small betting. Now this small betting is usually just to deny equity from a lot of the air in the cutoffs range. So the cutoff on these kinds of boards will basically flop a lot of air, right? On these kinds of boards where it's very dry and the ranks are fairly low, the cutoff has flopped a lot of air. They've got a lot of ace x, king x, jack x on these types of boards, on these queen high boards, and some queen x on these king high boards with, without any decent kickers, right? So there's no kickers to that. Let's say, for example, on king 7 2, there's, and the cutoff's got like queen 6, queen 7, that, sorry, queen, queen 7 is a pair, queen 9 or something like that. Just having queen 9 is just air, right? And so they're just betting small will, will put a lot of pressure on the cutoff's hands and the cutoff will have difficulty defending that air. And so the button with their strategy, with a lot of those pocket pairs that have 
decided pre-flop will just bet small once the cutoff checks to them to deny equity from those that they air with just some overcards. And as a result, against this small bet, there's a amount of raising on these kinds of boards, right? There's also a lot of folding, right? Because it's difficult to defend on those types of boards against a small bet, but there's a lot of raising on those boards as well. Okay, so the cutoff needs to go for that check raise at a pretty high frequency in these kinds of boards using their over pairs and ace king, which they have the advantage in pre-flop to defend their checking range with a good check raise. Against that quarter pot bet, on average, raising almost 20% of the time. But if you take away some of these boards, which there's no real small betting to begin with, and just look at the raising frequency up here, it's actually really quite high. Is this a filtered? Anyway, yeah, so raising at a nice frequency against a small bet. Okay. And once again, against the check raise, there is some three betting. Not a whole lot of three betting in position, but there is a little bit. Mostly defending as a call. Okay, let's go and have a look at some specific examples, just so I don't leave you guys hanging with this type of stuff. Ace King Seven. All right, one of these boards, offsuit Ace King. Got this one and a half pot bet. What is the betting range which that looks like? You've got mostly two pair, twenty percent two pair, a little bit of Ace Queen thrown in there, and some weaker weaker pairs as well, which will show down after after one or bets depending on the run out. Ace King strong enough to probably go three streets on brick run outs. Making this big bet, these under pairs fold and there's no real worry about having the opponent turn a set. The only set that they have to worry about is the set of sevens which they only have two percent in the range there. Brick, Ace King going for it again, another pot size bet and then say for example another brick, Ace King ripping it in. So that's how you play the Ace King with this type of board. And then the other bet size is the small bet size with a lot more of these top pairs and just trying to deny equity from the opponent's under pairs, right? So remember the opponent's flat a lot of, um, the button here has flat a lot of the pocket pairs pre-flop. And so betting small with top pair, second pair, and even some third pair really puts those pocket pairs into a spot, right? They have difficulty defending and that little bit of equity in terms of if it goes check, check and those hands turn a set, will be disastrous for for any of the top pairs. So making a small bet to win that EV from those types of hands is beneficial. Okay, let's have a look at another type of board, which is a bit interesting. Actually, let's have a look at checking line on this one first. Check that pot, right? Because what is the checking range? It's, it's, it's middle pair and weaker top pairs. And so you're taking your strong top pairs into the opponent and asking them, do you have ace king or do you just have top pair weak kicker, second pair no kicker type hands. That's that's what you're doing, you're just potting into them. All right, on that, let's look at some other board types that might be interesting. But yeah, King Knight 3. King Knight 3 got the two bet sizes, half pot, quarter pot, but in the checking line, two different bet sizes for the button here. Um, you've got the small bet and the big bet, this big bet one and a half times a pot with these sets, set of threes going for it, set of nines going for it, and then like, Tiny bit of ace king that fights pre flop, but that's not really a big consideration. But definitely, there's king queen um, being put in there. So, the, the range which makes this bet is mostly the set of threes for value and a little bit of king queen as well. And there's, there's the two pet king nine. So that's the value component, right? And there's loads of bluffs, right? Because when you make an over bet on the flop, you can have a lot of bluffs, right? Well, you have to have a lot of bluffs in order to make your opponent indifferent with their kind of king x hands. It's difficult for, for the opponent to follow king x hand on the flop because you're value betting king x yourself. So the hands that will be indifferent now is nine x, these pocket pairs um, on the flop. And then when you get to the turn, say for example, brick turn, check to you, you bet pot, then the king x becomes indifferent because you're representing either this king queen, a very strong top pair um, or a set for value. And then the, the bluff to value ratio being about one to one accordingly on the turn here on that brick turn and then there's this small bet size remember that the cutoff opens a lot of uh, junky hands pre-flop so this small bet size really just gets all of these weaker hands to fold these ace highs without any kind of backdoor flush draw is just suited gaps queen x jack x all of those hands with 
decent equity against these lower pocket pairs, like for example, pocket eights, pocket sevens, pocket sixes, and ace higher themselves. Got decent equity against them. You can fold them out or force them to put in a small bet in order to see the turn. And as a result, you're asking a question to the opponent: Do you have a trap here? Are you going to check raise me, or are you just, or are you just weak? And then once they call, brick turn, check. You're going to put this over bet here twice the pot. It's fairly straightforward, I think, for a lot of the regular viewers of Zenith. Okay, so we do one more. Nah, I think we'll leave it there because we're coming up on about 20 minutes. If you guys have any questions, just let me know. We'll, this is just a bit of an overview. I think we'll go a bit deeper into the game tree on a lot of the, on all the, these dry rag, these dry rag boards in the next tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll just discuss the dry rag boards in a little bit more depth and look at some of the runouts. So hopefully the, this video gave you a bit of an overview of how the dry rag boards are played on the flop and what kinds of strategies are implemented for both players in the button versus in, in the cutoff versus button button versus cutoff single raise pot two bit pot configuration thanks guys i'll see you guys in the next tutorial